Hello, hello. Welcome back for day 11 in my Christmas in July series, and it is Make a Tag Thursday, right? Um, you guys loved the tags that we did last week, and I think you guys are going to even love these ones even more. I do. I think these came out so pretty. We are doing a little bit more of ink blending over embossing. And I just love how these ones came out. I am using a stamp set from Close to My Heart, and unfortunately, they have one out of business. But I found this in a stash. Um, someone last year sent me a huge stash of uh, December daily type um, like items, uh, stamps and papers and embellishments. It was such a blessing. And I found this stamp set in that. And the sentiments or the, uh, what, I don't know what to call this. I guess they're sentiments. Uh, but like the quotes on here are, one of them is hilarious. It's talking about like get a winter nap. Um, but so pretty. I love how they are written. Um, and I was so excited to find them. And so I, d I did have to use them. And like I said, unfortunately, if I can find them online, I will make a link somewhere. Again, I do believe that Close to My Heart is already shut down. Uh, but maybe not. We'll see. All right. So all I am doing is using my Mini Misty, of course, to get a good stamp with some Versamark ink. And that is just sticky ink um, so that your embossing powder sticks to uh, the paper pretty much. And then it, um, you do want to use an anti-static uh, device of some sort. Anything will work. I have just a regular one from, I believe, like Joann's or Michael's or something like Hobby Lobby, maybe. It's just like a little pouch. Um, I know that there is other ones that have like brushes. Um, they've gotten pretty fancy over the last couple of years, but I just use a regular old little anti-static pouch. Again, I will link all these type of things below. And then I just have a, a uh, embossing heat gun tool from Hobby Lobby. Again, nothing fancy. I pretty much use everything that's like budget friendly um, unless it gets passed down to me like this amazing Misty um, that a TikTok um, crafter that I have met through that platform. Um, her name is um, Avi Renee. She is amazing and she upgraded her Misty and gifted me this one. So, um, yeah, it's just amazing. So, all right. So for my third tag, I did switch to a stamp set that I do believe you'll be able to find. This is a Tim Holtz one. Um, and this one says, and have yourself a merry little Christmas. I love these ones. Um, I do wish that I had stamps that like covered the whole tag, but I did do quite bigger tags than I normally do. It's just like the biggest tag one in my like nested die um, tags. I am going to stamp this all over in like a block method. So you've seen me do it like in the center, then I'll go up and then down the sides a little bit. Like I said, the tags that I did before this were a little smaller. So I didn't have to do this as many times, but honestly, it turned out great. Uh, you just kind of have to move this around. And I'm pretty sure there was probably a way to do it with the Misty where you really didn't have to move the stamp. You had to move the paper, but either way, I mean, you were going to move something. So I just decided to move the paper. <laughs> so, uh, all right, there we go. And then, like I said, each time I'm just marking that down with that Versamark, that magnet keeps everything in place real good. So you don't have to worry about that. And I had already done my anti-static. Then I'm just using a white embossing powder. I'm using white embossing powder for all of these. And we are going to do a little technique with like um, ink resisting on the embossing powder. So, and it's come out so good. I absolutely loved how these ones came out. And I hope you guys do too. So these ones, um, this this go around, I did choose a little bit more of uh, classic Christmas colors. There we go. There goes the embossing powder. It's kind of hard to see since it's on white, white on white, but here we go. 
My first color combination is going to be Tattered Rose. I forgot that this color was in um, my collection and it I was afraid to use it at first. Um, I did finally just get Spun Sugar and I'm super excited to use that one because I feel like that one is in a ton of different color combinations that I see online. Um, and then we used Festive Berries. And then I believe I brought in, yep, Lumberjack Plaid. And that wasn't quite red enough. I don't have mahogany. I think it's like mahogany red or mahogany wood, I think, or something like that, which is like the brown red of the um, Distress family. Uh, but, you know, when in doubt, you're going to use that black soot. And I just re-inked this black soot. So, and I'm like, oh, shoot, wait, we got to we got to calm down um, because it's juicy right now uh, because this ink or this pad had gotten quite dry. I use this black soot all the time. I think it's like the goat of distress oxides. And then you just take a mic microfiber cloth after that and wipe that embossing off and it becomes right back to white again. Sometimes in that black soot, you do have to do it a few times. But other than that, uh, look how gorgeous that is. I sat there for quite some time and was like, because I, I was going to put characters over all of these. And I was like, Ugh, I don't know if I want to cover that one up. So I do come up with a plan. Um, you'll just have to wait and see. Next up is Iced Spruce. Um, then I do go over to Wilderness. What is it? Um, oh, what is that color? something wilderness because I was going to use pine needles and then I was like, oh, no, I did not like those two greens together. What is that? Oh, I keep on. I can't remember what it is. Wilderness something. <laughs> and I was like, OK, that's better green. Um, and then I go all the way up to the top of it because I did not have another darker green than this. And black soot is going to come in and do its job again. So as you can see, I had shabby shutters sitting there on my desk also. Um, and I just didn't know exactly what type of green ombre I wanted. And um, yeah, as you can see, that black soot came into play again to darken up that top green and just make a nice dark green. I love how black soot just makes everything come together. And then I was like, okay, I wasn't totally in love with that ice spruce, but um, it wasn't bad. Um, so I did want to try out the shabby shutters. And so here we go. It was either going to be that or the Twisted Citron. And I thought that was going to be a little too neon green. I could have tried that one too. But Shabby Shutters worked great. Then we're going to go back to that Pine Needles. Rustic Wilderness was the other one. There we go. We're going to go back to that Pine Needles because I thought that those two matched better. And back to the goat, which is your black soot to make that top part just darken up absolutely loved it. Absolutely loved it. I do see that I could have probably went in with Chevy shutters and gotten a little bit more of a blend, but I also just cover pretty much all of that up anyways with a, um, with a snow bank. So don't, it's no big deal. Um, wiped that one down with my microfiber cloth and there's our tags. So all in all, I actually loved the Mary, have yourself a merry little Christmas one, the best for this, um, technique and covering them then again with um the little characters because I just I I loved those quote stamps so much I didn't want to cover them so as you can see here uh, last year I was just getting into coloring and really you know practicing and have so many little critters that never got used last year so they've been sitting on my desk for almost a whole year now and I would love to get them used. And I figured that there's no better way than to get these little guys used than tags. So uh, you can obviously make a card out of these too, but I think tags are much easier. You don't have to color coordinate as much on tags. Um, even though these ones are pretty color coordinated already together, I was probably just like practicing with the same markers over and over again. And I'm just gonna go through and figure out where I want these ones to go, wh what ones I want to use, what colors look well, and all that kind of stuff. So we are going to run some white cardstock though back through that stitch die. So I'm just using the bottom so that they match up perfectly in the stitch um, 
like the stitch embossing matches on the snowbank along with the tag. There you go. And I do not have a uh, snow hill die or even a regular hill die. I've actually lost it somewhere in the depths of this uh, craft room. So we are going to slash unslash fussy cut our hills. Um, probably the easiest fussy cutting, you know, that you can have, right? Of course. Uh, sorry, I went off screen a little bit. Oh, I probably went and put this back in the die because I cut it a little too high. So I wanted to cut that down just a little bit. Yeah, I can totally see myself probably going back and making way more of those red tags to tell you the honest truth. Um, I've been looking at it all morning and I'm just like, yep, we're probably going to go back and make several of those. I love it. Um, did just put a little bit, uh, whatever was left over on my brush just to give that white hill a little bit of a, um, shadow type thing. And then we are going to put our little reindeer over. I believe the reindeer. Let me go back and see. <laughs> yes. I think we're going to go with the reindeer. I'm like, Oh, wait a minute. We're going to use the reindeer and then the Santa Clauses. Um, I thought that they just worked best, but I am just going to sit here and play with them for a little bit, try and figure out, um, you know, the best way to put them down. Again, I wasn't so happy to cover up my sentiments. <laughs> um, I think it was just because they were quotes, honestly. I think if I was to do this again, I would make these tags and literally just use the quotes and maybe put some florals like you might see happen for the red one here and go back to the Tim Holtz um, stamp set and do that on more of the cards because I feel like when you um, stamp it out several times or you make a pattern out of it, then people know what it says behind there and like your brain just does it for you. Whereas these quotes, they're not, and they're not like, um, these quotes are not like, a song title that we all know, you know, where our brain just fills in the rest. Uh, these quotes are different <laughs> and I love them, a handwritten quotes type thing. And so it does cover up a little bit, but um, for me, I think they're just beautiful regardless. It is what it is. I'm not going to worry about too much about it. Um, but yeah, when we do this one, your brain just kind of knows. It says, have yourself a merry little Christmas behind there. And I don't think that you're as distracted um, to know what is being said behind there. All right. So we're going to get to use three little guys on this one. I'm pretty happy. I, I think I, what did I use? Five? I think I used five out of the group. I mean, the more the merrier. We will definitely be using those characters at the top there. In, on something else. Um, I know I made those for tags last year and never got to them. So um, we'll probably finish those tags up. I believe I just, like I said last year, which is why I'm doing this Christmas in July series, because last year I just, I couldn't get everything done. <laughs> I got too stressed and just couldn't get everything done. And it was my first year doing everything. So, you know, I just didn't, really come like I already have a ton going on at Christmas who doesn't right um and plus my family does have cocoa bombs for a fundraiser and so I'm constantly doing those during the season too along with all of the Christmas activities so so my um my way to get around not using characters on this is I've had this little uh, poinsettia, at least I hope it's a poinsettia, um, point, uh, die laying around for quite some time. And so I did that out of red and then just took a darker red slash purple, um, alcohol marker and colored that poinsettia. I could have probably did a little bit more depth, but I was like, eh, kind of forget it. I had been crafting pretty much all day between scrapbooking projects and cards. I had done a two hour live on TikTok at this point, making a card. So I was probably a little crafted out by the time I got to this video. Um, I was hoping to be a little bit further and more ahead in my videos to get these up for you. But as of right now, it is three o'clock on the 11th and you guys will probably see this about 
six. <laughs> so, but you know what? I'm still getting a video up <laughs> and that's all that matters. And we're getting projects done. Like that's all that matters with these three tags. I will have five tags done and you know, more the merrier, right? More the merrier. So, all right. So we're just going to put that point set together. And I think that this is the perfect way that I didn't cover that up, uh, but added some type of embellishment. I think this was so pretty guys. Um, it was probably one of my favorites. Um, and yeah, like I said, I could have probably went a, with a little more dimension with that point set up, but, um, I have to work on that, I think, a little bit. Um, I'm not super comfortable with coloring dyes yet, so we'll get there. All right, so there are those. Now we, of course, dyes need a ribbon. I don't have a ton of ribbon. I got rid of a ton of ribbon uh, because I just, uh, it was just, you know, too much in my craft room, and now I want all the ribbon back. <laughs> um, also, um, I did just staple this down because I probably will pull this back up and put some pattern. I, now that I looked at them through doing this video, I need to pull it back up and, um, I'm going to put some pattern paper on the back of these, um, put a to and from, or even just put another piece of white paper. When I do ink blending, it does get all over the back of these, <coughs> excuse me. And so, um, to make them finished, I will probably put another layer of either pattern paper or a plain white and put a to and from on the back of these so that they actually become tags. And I can't wait to see my tree um, full of these come uh, this December and, you know, how fun, right? How fun and just to see all of your work kind of together. You also could make a ton of these and put them on a small crafting tree. If you have a little tree in your craft room, this would be so cute to decorate a tree with, um, you know, make sets, give to people so that they can give them to people, that type of thing. So yeah, so just putting a little bit of a ribbon on there. Let me know what you guys think. Did you love this? Have you done the, you know, heat and it, it's not a new technique by no means, but I know new crafters, um, this is one of their favorites. It's an easy technique. Um, and it, you know, it's so pretty when you do it. So if you are a new crafter, um, heat embossing is the way to go and to get that first little, uh, project out of the way. Cause it is a super easy one to do. And that, and then, uh, ink over top of it and that embossing resists. So here is the final project. Thank you guys so much for getting this far and I will see you hopefully in day 12. And if not, I will be over on TikTok. Talk to you soon. Bye.